Hello, dear students. Today we will be covering the next part of respiration in plants. In this, we will be covering the experiments concerned with this topic. So, first we will be covering what is the difference between experimental and a control setup. An experimental setup is the setup to study a particular aspect of any process in which the condition under study is present. But when that condition under study is missing, we call that kind of a setup as a control setup. So the first experiment which we are going to study is to prove that carbon dioxide is liberated during respiration. So for this, we have taken a conical flask having germinating gram seeds in which a test tube containing potassium hydroxide has been hung from a thread. Now potassium hydroxide is a solvent for carbon dioxide, it absorbs carbon dioxide. A single hold cork is put on the mouth of the conical flask through which a bent tube is inserted. The other end of the bent tube is put in a beaker containing colored water. So this is how the initial stage of the experimental setup is arranged. We notice that the level of water in the bent tube is at the level of the water in the beaker. Now, after a couple of hours, we notice that the inside of the conical flask becomes misty and the level of water, colored water in the bent tube rises. Now, why this happens? The seeds are respiring and on respiration, they produce moisture, carbon dioxide and heat. The moisture condenses on the inner surface of the conical flask. The carbon dioxide produced is absorbed by potassium hydroxide. When the carbon dioxide is absorbed by potassium hydroxide, a partial vacuum is created due to which the colored water rises inside the bent tube. So this experiment clearly proves that carbon dioxide is liberated during respiration. Now, the experiment which we are now going to cover is to prove that oxygen is used up in respiration. So here we are having two different flasks. In flask A, we have wet cotton wool on which some germinating bean seeds have been placed. In a small vial or a small test tube, we have soda lime and that soda lime is hung from the inside of the conical flask. The conical flask is stoppered and a bent tube is inserted. The other end of the bent tube is dipped in a beaker containing colored water. The flask B has got wet cotton wool and some antiseptic. On top of the wet cotton wool, we place dead and boiled bean seeds. Bean seeds, when they are boiled, they become dead. So we cool them and we use them. And again, we have a small vial containing soda lime. Here also, there is a single hold cork through which a bent tube has been inserted. The other end of the bent tube is inserted in the beaker containing colored water. So here you might wonder why are we taking an antiseptic? An antiseptic will be used here so that no microorganisms grow on the dead bean seeds when we are trying to perform the experiment. The microorganisms, if they grow, they will perform their own respiration and will interfere with the experiment. So you might be wondering what is soda lime here? Soda lime is a mixture of sodium hydroxide and calcium oxide. It is basically an absorbent of carbon dioxide. After some time, we notice that the final level of liquid column in the experimental setup A rises. There is a slight increase in the final level of liquid in the control setup, that is the flask B as well. Now, why has the level of colored water risen in the bent tube attached with flask A? It is because the germinating bean seeds respire. For respiration, they need oxygen. This oxygen they are using from the air which is present inside the conical flask and in this bent tube. 
Once the oxygen is used up, they produce carbon dioxide. The carbon dioxide produced is used by soda lime. So the space which is now created, that partial vacuum which is created, pushes the water column and the colored water rises in the bent tube. Now, in case of the flask B, the soda lime absorbs whatever amount of carbon dioxide is present in the air in the conical flask as well as in the bent tube. So, there is a slight increase in the water level here as well. Remember, one-fifth of air is oxygen. So, oxygen is used, that much of carbon dioxide will be formed and therefore there is a considerable rise in the level of water in the bent tube attached with the experimental setup and only a slight with the control setup because only 0.04% of air is carbon dioxide. So this experiment clearly proves that oxygen is used up in respiration. So once oxygen is used, the oxygen will help in synthesis of carbon dioxide by the process of respiration, the carbon dioxide will be absorbed and partial vacuum created will make the water column rise in flask in the vent tube attached with flask A. The next experiment which we have is to prove that germinating seeds produce carbon dioxide during respiration and not dead boiled seeds. So we have two round bottomed flasks. In the round bottom flask A, we have germinating seeds on a moist cotton wool. It is toppered. And in the flask B, we have dead boiled seeds. Again, they have been placed on moist cotton wool, but with some antiseptic. The antiseptic which is used is basically to prevent the microbial growth, which will interfere with our experimental result. We stopper this flask as well. We leave them for a duration of two to three days. After two or three days, the flask A is taken and tilted over a test tube containing lime water. The lime water is shaken and we notice that this lime water turns milky. Then in another test tube containing lime water, the flask B is tilted in a similar manner and we shake the lime water. We notice that the lime water in this case does not turn milky clearly indicating that only germinating seeds produce carbon dioxide, but the dead boiled seeds do not. Now, you might wonder why is it that the carbon dioxide, which is a colorless and almost an odorless gas with a very faint odor, it does not go anywhere. It only passes down. Carbon dioxide is a gas which is considerably heavy. It is 2.5 times heavier than air. Due to this reason, it flows down and enters in the test tube containing lime water. So this experiment proves that germinating seeds produce carbon dioxide during respiration. We have another experiment to prove that carbon dioxide is produced by germinating seeds during respiration. So here we start this experiment by using four different conical flasks. The conical flasks are attached to each other using bent tubes. And finally, a small suction pump is attached to one corner, ensuring a unidirectional flow of air. Now, the bent tube, which is coming from external atmosphere, is entering in the liquid part present in flask A. The second bend tube begins from the space above the liquid present in flask A. This tube dips in the liquid present in the flask B. The third bend tube begins from the space above the liquid present in flask B. This bend tube is present very close to the germinating seeds. But the next bend tube begins from the space well above the germinating seeds. And finally, the fourth bent tube dips inside the liquid containing contained in the flask D. And again, the last bent tube begins from the space above the liquid and 
into the suction pump. Now, in the flask A, we have potassium hydroxide solution. Potassium hydroxide is a solvent for carbon dioxide. In the flask B, we have lime water. Lime water is an indicator for carbon dioxide. In flask C, we have germinating seeds. And in flask D, we have again got lime water. So, when the external atmospheric air is made to pass through the conical flask containing potassium hydroxide solution, the potassium hydroxide absorbs any carbon dioxide. So, carbon dioxide free air passes in the conical flask B. In conical flask B, the lime water does not turn milky. It does not turn milky because there is no carbon dioxide in the incoming air. This carbon dioxide free air is made to pass in the flask C containing germinating seeds. The germinating seeds will use oxygen and perform respiration. When they respire, they produce large amount of carbon dioxide. This carbon dioxide rich air passes into the next conical flask where it turns the lime water milky, clearly indicating that the germinating seeds produced carbon dioxide as Previously, no carbon dioxide was present because this flask containing lime water did not turn milky. So, it indicates very clearly that the carbon dioxide which has come in flask D has come from the germinating seeds. So, this experiment proves that carbon dioxide is produced by green by germinating seeds during respiration. Now, we may also use this experimental setup to prove that green plants also respire. Now, the similar experimental setup can be used. Here we have a small device filled with soda lime. The incoming air passes through soda lime. Now, soda lime, as you have done, is a mixture of sodium hydroxide and calcium oxide. This is an absorbent of carbon dioxide. So, carbon dioxide free air comes inside the lime water. The lime water here in flask A will not turn milky. This carbon dioxide free air passes through the bent tube into the bell jar containing the green plant. The green plant will perform respiration and upon performing respiration, this air rises in the next bent tube and passes to the next conical flask inside the lime water. Here the lime water will turn milky. Afterwards, this air passes to the suction pump. Because of attachment of a suction pump, the unidirectional flow of air is maintained. The air does not go backwards. Now, to ensure that this green plant only performs respiration and no photosynthesis, either the bell jar is covered with a black cloth or a black paper, or this entire experiment is carried out in darkness. It will prevent any photosynthesis from taking place and interfering with our experiment. So, this experiment proves that the carbon dioxide is produced by green plants during respiration. As the incoming air was free of carbon dioxide because the lime water here remained clear, this lime water turned milky because it obtained carbon dioxide from the respiring green plant. The next experiment which we have is to show liberation of heat during germination. So, we have two thermos flasks. One of them has got germinating seeds. This is your experimental setup. The other flask has got dead seeds, boiled seeds, along with some antiseptic. The antiseptic has been used to prevent any microbial growth from interfering with our experiment. A thermometer is attached in both the seeds and wet cotton wool plugs the opening. You leave this as such for some time. Afterwards, you notice that the level of temperature reading in the thermometer inserted in the experimental setup will rise, whereas no such rise takes place in the control setup. This is because when seeds respire, especially germinating seeds, they will produce heat. That heat gives the rise in temperature which is recorded by a thermometer. No such rise is noted in case of the control setup 
indicating that dead seeds do not respire and hence do not liberate any heat. The next experiment is used to demonstrate anaerobic respiration in plants. So we have a small setup containing a beaker filled with mercury over which a test tube having germinating pea seeds and filled with mercury is inverted. The germinating pea seeds have their seed coats removed to increase the rate of diffusion of gases. When this entire apparatus is left as such for a duration of two to three days, we notice that certain gas collects above the germinating pea seeds here. When a small pellet of potassium hydroxide is released at this point, just below the test tube, this potassium hydroxide pellet rises here, absorbs the gas and again the level of seed comes back to its original position. This indicates that the gas is nothing but carbon dioxide. And it also demonstrates that anaerobic respiration takes place in case of germinating seeds. Here, mercury is completely impermeable to atmospheric air. So, whatever amount of carbon dioxide has formed here, it has formed only because of anaerobic respiration taking place in the germinating seeds. So, this experiment therefore clearly demonstrates anaerobic respiration in germinating seeds. Now, in the end, we are going to differentiate between the two processes, the catabolic and the anabolic process of photosynthesis and respiration. Photosynthesis occurs only in the presence of chlorophyll, whereas respiration occurs in all living cells, whether or not they have chlorophyll. Photosynthesis occurs in the presence of sunlight. Respiration occurs at all times. Sunlight is not needed for respiration. Photosynthesis uses carbon dioxide in water. Respiration uses oxygen and glucose. Photosynthesis releases oxygen. Respiration releases carbon dioxide. Light energy is converted to chemical energy and this is stored in case of photosynthesis. Whereas in respiration, chemical energy is partly converted into heat and partly into useful energy that is ATP for various activities. Photosynthesis results in gain in weight because we are gaining carbon from the atmosphere and that carbon is changed into glucose and stored in the organism's body. Whereas in case of respiration, the glucose is broken down, converted into carbon dioxide. So carbon dioxide is lost to the atmosphere. So this results in loss in weight. Photosynthesis manufactures glucose. Therefore, it's an anabolic process. Respiration breaks down glucose. So this is a destructive or a catabolic process. So now you can clearly understand how these two processes are so very different from each other. So with this, we have finished the topic of respiration in plants. Hope you have understood it all. Thank you very much and God bless you all.